Greta Garbo, a Swedish-born actress who began her career in silent films and rose to become one of MGM's highest-grossing box office stars, is regarded as one of the greatest actresses of all time. She was renowned for her tragic characters and subtle performances, including her portrayal of a consumptive courtesan in 1936's Camille, which is frequently considered to be her best work. In 1954, she was given a special Academy Award after being nominated for three Academy Awards. Garbo, who never liked the Hollywood lifestyle, quit at age 35 and turned down every chance to work in the industry again. She avoided exposure, lived a quiet life, and accumulated a collection of artwork that sold for millions of dollars at auction when she passed away. Therefore, we will lead you through her stunning homes, where she could rest up a little, avoid the paparazzi, and design her stunning carpets. Where was her house she would eventually call home and bring in her design ideas to? Don't worry, you will see all the details, along the artwork she loved and the intricate antiques she collected. Be sure to watch the video till the end, as we will cover her dreamlike hideaway in Sweden by the sea. Here we go! Known for walking the streets of New York in a trench coat and sunglasses, she eventually was going to the place she had lived in for almost 40 years. That's our first and major destination. New York House At the height of her fame, Garbo was fiercely private and retired in 1941 at the age of 36. After a dozen years of wandering around, she finally made her home in New York City, where she enjoyed a three-bedroom cooperative apartment at the Campanile building in the upscale Beekman Place neighborhood, where she stayed until her death in 1990 at the age of 84. It was 1953 year. She was seeking anonymity in the unprotected lifestyle of busy New York. The flat on the fifth floor at 450 East 52nd Street was the one that caught her from head to toe. Constructed in 1927 and featuring a Venetian Gothic facade, it was a highly intriguing location even prior to Garbo's arrival. It was the location of the Mayfair, a private speakeasy during Prohibition. The building has historically housed a diverse range of citizens and is located at the end of a unique Manhattan cul-de-sac with an unhindered view up and down the East River. The triplex was owned by Henry and Claire Booth Luce. Notable figures who have called it home include Noel Coward, Edgar Kaufman, and Alexander Wolcott. Dorothy Parker dubbed it Wit's End, although the official name was the Campanile. The legacy tickled Garbo, and she finally was an official resident. The famous Campanile building on Manhattan's east side boasts rose-hued fortuny silk walls, a wood-paneled living room, and ornate French doors that lead to a private balcony. With these features and its prestigious postcode combined, this apartment is one of the most exciting listings currently on the market and one of the world's best homes. Her lifetime global hobby became gathering art, antiques, and furniture for her new house. Garbo adored searching for her treasures, whether she was on a Mediterranean cruise, a brisk walk through Paris, or a trot across New York. Her inner aesthetic was reflected in what she obtained. Her apartment was full of color, wit, and beauty. Her inner aesthetic was reflected in what she obtained. Garbo had her own intuition, even though she enjoyed talking about art and design with the leading authorities and fashionistas of the time. She made fashions rather than following them. She was confident in her natural and varied skills and had a great deal of faith in her judgment. Garbo made a lot of vibrant carpets for the apartment, Birds in Flight, the first series she created, documents a certain time in her artistic life. In 1962, she launched the series with two rugs, one for her bedroom and another for her closet room, which she had converted from a tiny library. The designs are vibrantly colored and strikingly geometric. Even though the forms are abstract, they may be translated to their winged inspiration, and each has a central medallion theme. When Garbo created the final rug in this series in 1966, the geometric designs she had imagined and drawn could have been regarded as avant-garde. Garbo created trellis-patterned runners for the hallways. Compared to the rest of the apartment, the lengthy hallways were comparatively plain, aside from the carpets. One visitor would have thought the place was musty high in Victoriana because of the flocked brown walls. Her rug's shocking pink and chartreuse hues, on the other hand, were more reminiscent of the garden-like spaces outside. 
her prelude, if you will. Primary Bedroom For her bedroom, Garbo disassembled an old Swedish scap, a massive armoire-like object she had purchased at an auction in Stockholm many years ago. The delicate and organic floral carvings are typical of her taste in such items. She disassembled the entire sculpture and used the magnificent panels to build a niche and a bed. She selected a fortune cloth with African tribal designs on a salmon-colored backdrop with modeling for the bedroom and the closet room. The cloth is remarkably contemporary despite its rudimentary origins. Over the closet is part of her collection of hats, while others are stacked on a carved and painted Russian provincial tea table from circa 1880. Garbo had a strong affinity for color. Often, she would declare, color makes room to sing. Her rooms did, for sure. Hundreds of artworks and antiques that spoke to color and character were gathered all along her lifetime. In her deep, longing voice, she would groan, if only I had the room, whenever she saw something in a store or auction house that touched her soul. She became adept at detecting locations and fitting in her just-bought antiques and artworks. Living Room She had stacked paintings on the walls all the way to the ceiling in the living room, creating a veritable chorus. Imaginative porcelains filled the tables and bookcases. It had the stunning effect of a fully blooming garden. Her collection was full of floral motifs, so the apartment was awash with real and recreated flowers. An 18th century marquise was adorned with beautifully carved roses. A rococo chest of drawers was adorned with painted tulips, and little chandeliers hung from floriated pastel-colored porcelains flecked the corridors with light. Numerous beautiful and vibrant floral still lifes by a variety of artists, including Pierre Bonnard, Kays van Dongen, Louis Valta, Georges d'Espagna, Alexei von Jaulensky, Madeleine Le Maire, and even Garbo's own artist brother Sven Gustafsson were part of her collection. In her travels, she always found a place for the lovely little nameless painted bouquets she saw. Although one could infer that Garbo was drawn to pictures of purity, her choices were not just flowery themes. A sweet scene of a young nursemaid reading to the artist's youngest kid is depicted in the Renoir painting above the fireplace. Alongside, there was a little silent canvas that could represent Garbo herself, viewed from behind, wearing her signature floppy hat and gazing into a placid sea. Beyond the silk and wood walls of this unit, the wider Campanile building is equally striking. Other celebrities who have called the exclusive landmark their home include actor Rex Harrison, Ethel Barrymore, and members of the billionaire Rothschild and Heinz families. Her home was featured in an episode of Open House in 2017. It was listed for $5.95 million at the time, and realtor Brian Lewis led a tour, calling out the naughty pine finishes as another Scandinavian touch and a secret bar that's been in place since Garbo's residency. Still owned by her family, the elegant fifth-floor apartment was listed last year at $7.25 million, but with no takers, it was removed from the market later in the year. Swedish Summer House There is no surprise the Swedish-born star would own a dreamy hideaway house at the place where she belonged. Indeed, it's easy to see why Garbo felt like at home in this stunning, heartwarming yellow house. The obsessively private Hollywood star would steal away to the scenic home, formerly owned by her brother, on the Swedish island of Ingaro, with the picturesque Baltic seaside view. The main home has up to seven bedrooms and totals 283 square meters. Architectural elements include a huge south-facing patio with a view of the lake, as well as French balconies from a family room and a bedroom on the second story. It was decorated in a more simple yet elegant style, reflecting Garbo's own understated and sophisticated taste. The gray colors throughout the house co-echoed with the Swedish Higa design, but were delicately upwind with her love for artwork. The rooms of the yellow, Scandinavian-style home flow into one another, with white walls, wood floors, and multiple fireplaces warming the home. At the height of her success, in 1929, the stunning actress left her mark on the property. According to the property agent, she created the basement, which she used as a game room and had a church relief put on the walls. 
King Gustav Vasa, who ruled Sweden from 1523 until his death in 1560, is shown in the sculpted artwork. With its private pier, verdant garden, and sea view, the property is a genuine archipelago dream. In addition to a big brewing facility and a garage, the site comprises four extra buildings. Two other cabins are available for storage or as guest rooms. Following further refurbishments, her Swedish hideaway now has a guest room with a fireplace in the basement. Back in 2018, the seaside sanctuary hit the market with an asking price of almost $4 million. Despite her international fame and success in Hollywood, Garbo never forgot her Swedish heritage and often spoke fondly of her homeland. The summer house was a place where she could feel close to her roots and reconnect with the land of her birth, but fewer of us know her short-lived address at Beverly Hills, which she occupied in the 1930s. Let's have a look. Beverly Hills Home In the past, movie star Greta Garbo and her friend, the divorced orchestra conductor Leopold Stokowski, lived in this six-bedroom, six-bathroom home in Beverly Hills at 9330 Beverly Crest Drive. Rumor has it that the two were in love. According to the journal, Garbo's tenure at the house was comparatively short, lasting from approximately 1937 to 1939. After that, she moved on to the next in a long string of rented homes. With a current asking price of $10 million, it has undergone extensive renovations and additions by the illustrious celebrity designer, Nicole Sassman. Few of the home's original characteristics remain after a significant change in the early 2000s, despite subtle reminders of its original Jazz Age modern stylings, such as the front facade's camber that mimics the street's sweeping arc. The house, which is well situated on the hill and offers some of the most stunning panoramic views from downtown Los Angeles to the Pacific Ocean, blends the charm of Hollywood's golden age with contemporary comfort and luxury. It's more than simply a home, it's an experience, a representation of history, glamour, and the sought-after Californian lifestyle. The interior features a lot of sumptuous brickwork and wood. The living area features floor-to-ceiling windows, and the kitchen is equipped with custom cabinetry. Beyond it, there is a sun deck, a zero-edge infinity pool, and a concealed zen bar among the multi-level outdoor amenities. In addition, there is a walk-in pantry, a wine cellar, and central air. Below the pool is a pair of grassy terraces, and below that, out of sight and shielded by great plumes of verdant foliage and retractable awnings, is an intimate alfresco lounge. Garbo's houses were not only luxurious residences, but also served as extensions of her unique personality and taste. Each property was carefully decorated and maintained to reflect Garbo's refined sensibilities and love of beauty. Her homes were filled with art, antiques, and personal mementos that spoke to her sophisticated yet private nature. Don't you agree? Write down your thoughts about Greta Garbo's heritage. Which home do you like most of all? Would you love to design the lovely, colorful nestle in the style of Garbo? Feel free to write ideas about homes or architecture you want us to feature in new episodes. Thank you for staying with us, and don't forget to follow the channel for new content. See you soon!